This is the second video in our series, Continuous Delivery 101. In this video, we'll continue to look more at the basics of DevOps and continuous delivery. We'll start by going more in depth on a deployment pipeline. We'll cover some of the common types of automated testing, as well as talk about some of the misconceptions that are commonly held in this area. Much of the content in this video is covered in a blog post by David Rice, which asks if you're ready for continuous delivery. It can be found on the GoCD website at go.cd slash blog. Deployment pipeline is a term commonly used to refer to the steps our software takes between code commit and production. We believe these steps should be definable by you to whatever makes the most sense for your product. The steps I'll show here are an example, but not uncommon. The first stage of a pipeline should run through a fast set of tests, hopefully completing in just a few minutes at the most. The job of this stage is to let the development team know as quickly as possible if the latest commit has introduced a problem. If this stage fails, the team stops and addresses the issue. Since our changes are very small, we don't roll back to an earlier version. Instead, the team quickly figures out how to fix the code or pulls out the changes and makes a new commit. Once the new change has passed the first stage, it moves on automatically to longer running tests, such as automated regression tests. This type of testing generally takes a bit longer to run. If this stage fails, we also stop what we're working on to investigate. Don't accept that test always fails explanations. In this example, the next stage is called user acceptance. This is an example of where continuous delivery and continuous deployment differ. In this stage, someone makes a decision about the readiness of the software for production. That decision might be based on feature completeness or any other factor. The primary point is that it's a business decision, not a technical constraint. From there, if the deployment pipeline hasn't killed the build, it's deployed to production. Diagrams of continuous delivery, including the one I just showed you about a deployment pipeline, typically depict a linear flow. On the surface, this is quite different from continuous integration, which is usually shown as a loop. But CD as a linear flow is an incomplete picture. A good deployment pipeline has numerous feedback loops along the way. At each stage of the pipeline, verifications are run. If they pass, the pipeline continues. If they fail, the pipeline halts and the team responds appropriately to the feedback. The feedback along the way prevents CD from being chaos. Poor quality will almost never reach production in a well-designed pipeline. Feedback loops are created by each stage of a deployment pipeline using different types of tests. This automation is key to the success of CD in your organization. There are many types of automated testing, almost all of which could be included in a deployment pipeline. The types of testing we think are among the most important are unit, regression, and performance. Unit tests should be fast, easy to maintain, and support rapid change of your application. It's vital that the team value a thorough and fast unit test suite if you want to be able to move fast with confidence. What's fast? A few minutes on a large code base is okay, but faster is better. Slow unit tests result in a slow, horribly frustrating development flow. On a mature team, the testers will be comfortable with pushing as much of your test automation as possible into this unit test layer. Code coverage is important, but tracking metrics is generally only beneficial for a team learning the basics. Some frameworks and platforms are known to be slow when it comes to unit tests. Do not fight or subvert a framework to make tests fast. Instead, consider switching your framework or platform. A regression test suite verifies that your entire application actually works. This suite adds a ton of value to a deployment pipeline. For many, the regression stage of a pipeline gives the confidence needed to deploy. Regression tests should be 100% automated. They are change detectors and do not require brain power to execute. A manual regression stage in your deployment process will prove painful. Work to get rid of it. Your testers can add more value elsewhere. We reject the notion that a regression suite must mean slow, flaky selenium test. While it's a fair reputation, it was earned by many teams doing it wrong. How to author and maintain an automated regression suite is a book-worthy topic by itself, but we'll give a few guidelines. Don't couple them to small stories or tasks. Only consider them in the context of the entire application. 
Have programmers write these tests. Train your testers to code if they're interested in automation. Avoid drag and drop programming. Even the best suites we've seen tend to be slow. Embrace using some combination of hardware, virtualization, and cloud to run these tests in parallel. Performance testing, verifying that your application meets specific performance criteria, is another massive topic. There's no one way to do it. Your approach will vary according to request volume and data size. There are also many varieties, load, stress, soak, and spike, to name a few. It's too big of a topic for this video. That said, we do have some thinking that can help you assess your maturity. Do not leave this phase for last. We cannot stress enough just how difficult this practice is and how much time we've seen sunk into failed efforts. Everything about it is difficult. Modeling, standing up an environment, building the harness, assessing results, building it into your deployment pipeline. Also, don't assume you'll reach web scale in a month or two. You'll waste huge cycles prematurely optimizing both your application and your tests. Don't take this as us saying, don't consider what your actual scale might be. Here's a suggestion that you be realistic and pragmatic. Also, utilize production monitoring to the greatest extent possible. A Canary release can go a long way towards verifying the performance of a new version of your application. One of the biggest changes for organizations who have moved to a DevOps culture with continuous delivery is the concept of you build it, you run it, made famous in a talk by Werner Vogels from Amazon. In this world, feedback loops aren't only for pre-production phases. As much as we try to achieve dev production parity, production is truly a unique environment for most organizations and things can and do go wrong. Your team should be notified when something is broken, not learn about it over social networks. The team should have a plan to respond quickly. Be as thoughtful about monitoring alerts as you are with other parts of your application. Also, keep a database of events so that you can later look for patterns. Finally, we'd like to talk about a few misconceptions we see on a regular basis. First, we don't believe you can do DevOps. If you watch the first video in this series, you'll remember that we believe DevOps is a culture movement. This also means we don't generally support the idea of a DevOps team. Jez Humble has been quoted as saying, you can't fix silos by building another silo. On the same general topic, Continuous delivery and DevOps are not the same thing. We believe continuous delivery is what you do as part of a DevOps culture. Sitting users down in front of your application and trying it out is a critical feedback loop. In an enterprise setting, we like to see two types of user testing, usability testing and user acceptance testing. Usability testing verifies that users find the application easy to use. User acceptance testing verifies that users can complete transactions with the application in a real-world setting. There can be a fair bit of overlap between the two types. If you do not do user testing, you will struggle getting users to accept frequent releases of new versions. Users will only like rapid changes if the experience remains usable, consistent, and effective. We also want to call out these feedback loops are manual processes that often require weeks or months of elapsed time. They are typically not modeled into the deployment pipeline, and that's fine. But do not leave them both batched up until the end. That's a long wait period and likely an unknown amount of rework before deploying to production. If you do this, your process will feel more like waterfall than CD. Run these user tests early and often while you're writing the code. Thank you for watching this part of our video series. Make sure to watch part three, where we'll go into some of the principles and practices behind continuous delivery and DevOps.